In this video, I'll describe the methodology and findings in the paper Low Rates in Bank Loan Supply, Theory and Evidence from Japan. I'm Cynthia Balak, and this paper is joint work with Yen Kobe. This paper is motivated by the observation that nominal interest rates are falling in almost all developed economies. The specific research question we're interested in exploring is how persistently low interest rates affect the supply of credit through the banking system. The answer that we come up with is that they reduce the value of banks' deposit franchises, decreasing banks' net worth and decreasing banks' credit supply. The way that we come up with this answer is a dual approach in which we first look at the empirical evidence from the low interest rate experience of Japanese banks using Japanese bank microdata. We use long-term variation in the nominal interest rate in Japan, and for identification, look at the cross-sectional heterogeneity in bank exposure to the monetary policy environment across Japanese banks. We also establish a consistent theoretical mechanism in a quantitative model in which banks have market power in deposits and banks' leverage acts as a constraint on lending. In this model, where heterogeneous banks intermediate between households and firms, we find that the effect of a low nominal interest rate environment restricts the supply of credit to firms. In this video, I'll describe the results that we find for bank profitability both in the data and in the model, and I'll explain why this has consequences for loan supply. Finally, I'll explain the quantitative application of our model, and I will talk about the scope for policy. The first main contribution of the paper is to show that banks' profitability decreases as nominal interest rates fall. We first show this in the cross-section of Japanese banks when we sort banks according to how dependent they are on deposits as a source of funding. We show that banks that are more exposed to the monetary policy environment because they are more dependent on deposits as a source of funding. These banks show a persistent decline in interest margins after the onset of the low interest rate environment. What I'm showing here is the relative profitability of Japanese banks that are more exposed relative to the banks that are less exposed to the monetary policy environment over the full sample period that were available to us in microdata. What this shows is that after 2000, there is a steep and persistent decline in the net interest margin of banks that does not yet see any sort of recovery to today. This effect on net interest margins, in fact, affects other outcomes of the bank because banks are not able to increase their sources of income from other non-interest dependent sources, such as fees. And we can show that fees do not increase, and we can also show that the costs that banks face fall, but fall by relatively little. Because banks don't issue more equity or reduce their dividend payouts, this has an effect on bank equity and has an effect on bank lending. We next turn to showing that this has an impact on banks' credit supply, and we can show this in the data, but we also develop a model to explain the mechanism behind why this is the case. In the model, we have three sets of agents. We have households, banks, and firms. Households in the model are able to save either in cash, in bonds, or through deposits in the banking system. Households are going to have some desire to hold liquidity, which will motivate them holding cash and bank deposits in addition to bonds. Importantly, we'll imagine that banks have different degrees of market power in their local deposit markets. This means that if a household has some additional quantity of deposits they want to save, they'll predominantly save these amounts in banks that have higher amounts of deposit market power. You can think of these banks as being the ones that have more branches or have better customer service uh, and that lead them to therefore have a larger share of deposit funding. The third agent in the model are firms, and the firms are important for us to be able to trace the impact of bank profitability back to outcomes at a firm level and in an, 
and at an economy level. What we show using the model is that when nominal rates fall, because the deposit profitability of banks is squeezed, banks generate less equity. As a consequence of having less equity, banks are able to lend less and loan spreads increase. And because loan spreads increase, firms borrow less and they borrow less in particular from exposed banks relative to what they borrow to banks that are not exposed. So this is something that we're also able to show in the empirical data. So the final contribution of the paper is to look at what these mechanisms buy us in terms of quantitative implications when we think about the aggregate impact for the overall economy. Because our empirical identification relies on looking at the relative effect of exposed banks relative to unexposed banks, we need the model to be able to think about what overall impact this channel has on the economy and to be able to think about some counterfactual experiments in which we would hope that there is some scope for policy. So using a version of the model that is calibrated to match the Japanese experience since 1990, we run an experiment in which we model a decline in inflation expectations that results in a decline in nominal interest rates of 3%. This is a decline in inflation expectations and real rates and, and nominal rates such that the real rate remains constant. In response to this decline in nominal rates, we find in the calibrated version of the model an increase in loan spreads of 30 basis points, which closely matches what we find in the data. And we find an equilibrium response of lending that declines by about 4%. Now this is a significant decline in lending and it is also a decline that is strongly nonlinear and that increases more steeply as interest rates become lower and closer to zero. This has an impact on output that is somewhat muted because firms are able to substitute away from banks by borrowing from other sources of capital. Now, using the model, we do two experiments to think about the impact of policy. The two policy counterfactuals that we study are reserve tiering and cash taxes. These are two potential policies that have been proposed to alleviate the effects of low interest rate environments on banks. Reserve tiering operates through applying the policy rate differentially to different levels of reserves that banks hold with the central bank. We calibrate our model to a version of reserve tiering that is similar to the quantities that have been implemented by the Bank of Japan. We find that this has a small effect on decreasing the loan spread increase that is caused by the decline in the nominal interest rate environment and that this can have a positive impact on loan supply. Similarly, we look at the scope to introduce cash taxes, uh, such as have been proposed by Agarwal and Kimball, among others, and we find that this has a quantitatively larger effect on decreasing the loan spread. In conclusion, we make three main contributions in this paper. First, we propose a theory of bank intermediation with frictions, in which lending and equity frictions lead to the under-provision of loans. In this model, banks provide a differentiated form of liquid savings to households. And although market power alleviates credit frictions, this mechanism is less active when interest rates are low. Alongside the model, we provide novel, consistent evidence from Japan that profitability, and in particular deposit spreads, have declined significantly since the late 1990s. We show this effect primarily among deposit-dependent banks, but can also show that this has effects on banks' overall profitability, their equity, and their lending. The quantitative exercise is aimed to think about what aggregate effect this has in Japan in general equilibrium, and also to demonstrate that there is scope for policy to improve the negative impacts of the low interest rate environment on banks. Overall, what we've shown is that long periods of low interest rate environments pose challenges for banks and firms. 
but that there is some scope for improvement through policy. Thank you.